Hi, I'm Kevin Hall, CEO of Global Integration. We are an ideas, consulting and training company that specialises in people management in complex, matrixed, virtual and global organisations. I'd like to share with you some of our ideas on working in these very complex organisations. In this video, I'm going to talk about virtual teams training. Virtual teams are typically where the team manager does not have direct line control over team members, for example in cross-functional teams. But we can also talk about remote teams, where members are physically based in different locations and need to work together with less face-to-face -face interaction and more communication through technology. We also talk about matrix teams, where individuals have multiple bosses and may be working on several teams. And of course many of these teams operate internationally and so have the additional challenges of working across cultures and time zones. So depending on your particular team, you may be managing across distance, cultures, time zones, through technology and in complex virtual and matrix organisation structures. So each virtual team can have a different blend of people management challenges and virtual team training should be tailored to the specific challenges that your team faces. It's not just a traditional team building program with an extra slide on using email. The reality is that business has become more complex and the old, simple, vertical team structure doesn't reflect how work is really done today. We structure our virtual teams training around four C's cooperation, communication, control and community. Since we developed the world's first virtual teams training in 1994, we've delivered about 100,000 participant days of training in this area and we've evolved the program continuously with our clients who are over 300 of the world's leading global companies. The first C is cooperation. In virtual teams, cooperation becomes much more complex and expensive. Virtual teams are more diverse and challenging to run and we see a significant increase in what we call transaction costs. The obvious ones include travel costs. It can cost fifty to a hundred thousand dollars to get an international team face to face. But transaction costs can also include delay caused by time zones or the inconvenience of having to be available outside your normal working hours for that global conference call. Because of this we need to be much more selective about when and how we cooperate and use virtual teams. And we also need to find ways of reducing the cost of cooperation by using communication technologies. We've developed some practical tools to help teams streamline cooperation and speed up the delivery of virtual teams and projects by up to 25%. The second C is communication. Our clients have a huge range of communication technologies but actually most suffer from too much communication, too many unnecessary meetings, conference calls and emails. Communication in virtual teams can also become quite passive. Well I sent you an email. Or even worse, did you not see that message on the 70th page of the attached PowerPoint presentation? It's not really communication is it? Communication is about really making sure that your message has been received and understood. So we often work with virtual teams on how to choose and use their communication technologies appropriately but also how to disconnect from unnecessary communication and make time to have real two-way conversations rather than just broadcasting information at each other. Participants use this to reduce the number of unnecessary meetings, webinars, calls and emails and to make the remaining ones much more participative and engaging. The third C is about control, in particular finding the right balance between control and trust. In virtual teams, where we're working across distance, cultures, time zones, technology and complex organisations, there are lots of small things that can undermine trust. And when trust is undermined, then managers tend to increase control, to stay more involved in decisions, to increase their level of meetings, reporting, etc. And this can cause delay, cost and dissatisfaction. Participants can use these tools to build trust remotely and push control to lower levels in the organisation. 
to systematically build higher levels of capability and confidence, to speed up decisions and delivery, and to counter micromanagement. And the fourth and final C is community. In the past, communities were based on place. Today's virtual teams may not even meet, yet we still need to build trust and team spirit. So we help virtual teams to understand what we call their keys to community, the practical techniques for building community, and also to understand what's realistic and what's affordable. In each case, we develop these skills through simulations, practical tools and exercises, so that participants can really apply the techniques to their virtual team reality. If you'd like to find out more about our virtual teams training, please visit us at global-integration.com where you'll find lots more videos, podcasts and other information. I wish you good luck and thank you for watching.